knowledge is becoming networked. And one of the places to see this at work, especially when it comes to learning, is how software developers learn these days. So if you are a software developer and you have a question of something going wrong with your programming code or you need to learn a new language or um, you have uh, you just don't know how to do something and you've been trying to think of it and you can't, you'll go online, of course, and you'll go to a search engine and you'll ask. And the chances are very good that you will get an answer because as the internet grows and it, its scale increases, it becomes ever more unlikely that you are the first or the only person to have asked any one question. Whatever question you have, somebody else has asked it, and it's probably been answered. So you'll search for it, and you'll find a, a discussion somewhere. Um, it might be at a site like Stack Overview, Overflow, excuse me, Stack Overflow, uh, which is a question and answer site for developers, or at a number of other places. It could be on a blog, it could be wherever. Um, you will see at Stack Overflow or sites like it, you will see an answer that somebody from the crowd has contributed, a whole list of answers that various people have contributed. And some of those answers will be voted up, right? Uh, good answers. And then there will be a discussion of those answers. There will be iteration upon them. Somebody will say, well, no, that's, that's right, but that won't work in Internet Explorer, and here's how you fix that. Or uh, here's, that's, that'll work except here or there, or here's a better way of doing it. This will be faster, this will, and so forth. And at the end of this iterative process, you will have an answer on the site that very likely you can just copy the, the code and, and you're done. And so we see a few things here. This is an incredibly efficient system. It's so much, uh, being a developer now, you can be so much more efficient because of systems like this. You can ask questions, get answers, reuse code. Um, and there's some lessons that we see playing out here. One is that this works in part because the culture of developers is quite generous. They will provide answers even if you may be a competitor. They don't know if you're a competitor. To know something and to not provide the answer is selfish. And in, in, the, this, um, in this new world, in, the, in this particular knowledge network, that sort of selfishness is not uh, it, it's not permitted, it's frowned upon. Uh, but there's another lesson as well. Um, well. Well, another lesson is to iterate, to make small changes and to have a crowd work on a piece of code or whatever, but a piece of code and make it better and better and better and better. That's an important lesson as well. So generosity makes this possible, um, iteration makes it possible. But the third thing that makes it possible is a commitment to learning in public. Uh, by which I mean this. In our educational systems in the West, generally the idea is that a teacher educates a student and the student becomes a better person because of that and society becomes better because it has better people in it. And that works pretty well. But the act of education is still considered to be private. That is, it's for the benefit directly of the student. In the knowledge network that developers have created for themselves, that's not the case. The idea is instead that all learning ought to be in public and be something that makes the public better. It improves the public. The act of learning, the act of educating, of teaching are done in public so that others will learn from them. And this idea of education as a public act has tremendous power and tremendous benefits because it makes the entire network, the entire ecosystem smarter. If we can apply this within our businesses, within our educational system, and beyond, then our own knowledge network will become much smarter, much faster. Thanks very much.